aim to understand and experience love. I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you recall the first time you ever felt loved? It was an experience, and it was something that was given to you in order that you, in turn, could express love yourself. Being loved precedes loving. You cannot love unless you are loved. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How did I learn to love? I learned to love because God is love. God is love. And God loved me before I ever loved Him. Do you understand that this morning, my friend? Do you understand that God loved you before you ever thought about loving God? And He gave you the capacity to love Him back? as He shared His love with you through His Son, Jesus Christ. And we come to understand and experience love by the fact that Christ sacrificed His life for us. If you see someone in need and you have the means to do something about it and you do nothing about it, God's love disappears from you, this passage tells us. He asked the question, how does the love of God abide in Him? If I love God, then someone comes in my path and I have, they have a great need and I have the means and capacity by which to meet that and I, I, I let that go by. The Bible says God's love is not being demonstrated in my life at that point. I want to make an honest confession before you this morning as your pastor. Too many times I have passed by someone who held a sign, I am hungry. And too many times before I realized what I was doing, the thought came in my mind, well, let them get a job. Where is the love of God? Where is the love of God? What happened at that moment is I let the love of God slip away. It's not a matter of what that person would do with what I failed to give him or her. The issue is, do I love that person? And would I express my love to that individual? And God says to me, and he says to you, if we have the love of God in us, abiding in us, and we have the means and capacity to help someone, and the opportunity presents itself, and we do not do that, how does the love of God abide in us? A good question that deserves a good answer. When do we practice real love? First of all, we practice real love when we love in actions, not word or in tongue. You see, Love is an action word. Anyone can say the words, I love you. <laughs> it's easy to tell somebody that you love them if you know they love you back. <laughs> but how about that person that doesn't have the capacity to love you back? We practice real love when we love in action. Our actions speak louder than our words. When we love in action, not words or in tongue, love is a powerful thing. And if we demonstrate the love of God in Jesus Christ beyond our words, beyond our tongue, then we will have understood, better understood, the love of God in Jesus Christ. Why do I say that? Simply for this reason. God proved His love to you and me when He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus loved you on Calvary's tree when you couldn't love Him back. And He loved me the same way. He demonstrated His love. He took up the cross, carried His own cross, and went to Golgotha's hill, and there, suspended between heaven and earth, he stretched out his arms, and in essence, in his actions, he was saying, not even in his words, but in his actions, I love you. I love you. I love you. 
What, Master, is the greatest commandment in all the world? Jesus said, I will tell you. Listen carefully, he says. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, all your being, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the entire Word of God. On these two commandments. I want to share with you the secret this morning of the ails of our world. All the ailments, all the illness, all the turmoil, all the chaos, all the hatred, all the crime, all the sin. It is spelled L-O-V-E. L-O-V-E. He says in verse 19, Love is the way to shut down self-criticism. Some of you are here this morning and you're hard on yourself. You've been criticizing yourself and sometimes that can be productive and sometimes it can be counterproductive. But he says in verse 19, we will set our hearts at rest before him because we know that he loves us. God is greater than our hearts, the Bible says here, and knows more about us than we do ourselves, verses 20 through 21. And I can receive what God has for me if I am doing what He has asked me to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. If I want to have the things that God wants me to have, I can receive those things only if I am doing what He has commanded me to do in His Word. It doesn't work any other way. I can receive what He has for me if I'm doing what he said. As you keep God's word, this passage says, you will experience his deep and abiding presence, verses 23 and 24. Right belief will always result in right behavior. If I keep God's word, I will experience his deep and abiding presence. If I don't love, I don't know God because God is love, 1 John 4, verse 8. If I don't love, I don't love God, because God is love. Did you notice that nowhere in these passages of Scripture you found the word like? <laughs> if you like so and so, God didn't say that. He said, but if you love others, not if you like others. But if you love others, it makes all the difference in the world. This is what He expects us to do. God doesn't like a lot of things about you and me. But He loves us too much to allow us to stay the way we are. God doesn't like everything about me. But He loves me too much to allow me to stay as I am. I must love others, period. I must even love everybody with no strings attached. God said in His Word, this is the greatest commandment. If we would live in love with one another as God loves us, I suggest to you, without fear of being rebuked, all trouble among believers would absolutely disappear. Would absolutely disappear. Because hate cannot reside in the same vessel that love resides in. Perfect love, the Bible says, cast out fear. The message from the beginning has always been, still is, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what makes the world work, and nothing else. That's what transcends all of our problems in our private, personal families, in our relationships with people at work, in the family of God, in the church. Love must be Transcend all of those things in order for it to work. You don't have to like me 
but you sure got to love me. <laughs> you sure got to love me. Why? Because God loves me. I got to love you <laughs> because God loves you and God loves me. How in the world did we complicate this thing? How did we mess it up? How did we make such a flop of this? <laughs> the truth is so powerful, so simple, so profound. Love God and love each other. Now, that transcends your human capability and mine. And that has nothing to do with my ability to love somebody else. It has everything to do and only to do with the love of God that lives in my life and wants to be exuded out into the life of another. It is God loving you through me. God loving me through you. If we depended upon our own human concept of love, it would fail every time. And that's what's happening in our world. That's what's happening. Two greatest commandments. You want to know how to please God this morning? Let God love you. <laughs> let God love you. And you in turn let his love shine out in your life, into the lives of others. Let me give you a full, sure-fired remedy, a failed proof of how you can kill somebody. You can quote me. Love them to death. It's better than anything you can think of. Perfect love cast out fear. <laughs> Perfect love transcends our feeble concept of love. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Could it be that if we just get to loving each other, we might get to know each other better? <laughs> I think so. I think so. The love of God is a powerful thing, the greatest force in this world. ISIS, the terrorist, and everything else cannot diminish the love of God in Jesus Christ. His love is for real. His love is for real. Let's stand to our feet.